This is a uh, quick tutorial on editing drone videos using Blackmagic Design's DaVinci Resolve. It's a full featured video editing software package that you can download for free. Uh, once we get it downloaded, uh, installed, open it up. Uh, it takes a little bit. I sped this up, but it does take a, about a minute for the thing to actually load up. And then you'll come to uh, the create your, your video. Two ways to do it. You can either do it in the untitled project or down in the new project tab at the bottom. We click on the new tab, a uh, new project tab. We enter our uh, the title for our video, create, and the first thing it does is bring you to the uh, timeline editing window. Uh, here's the space for editing the, the actual timeline itself. Uh, on the left side over here is the uh, media pool where you pull your clips for, for editing. Uh, the monitor, uh, right side is the inspector for adjusting features on your video. And then the toolbox will give you some good, good features, creating titles, video and audio transitions uh, for making it, giving it that more professional look. And uh, coming back to the timeline, but at the bottom is the navigation bar. This is for moving back and forth between your various editing modes as well as getting your, your media. So to start with, we have to go over to the media tab uh, since we have no media in there. The left box is, is the links to where we have our media, uh, but it's not populated automatically. You have to actually tell it where those, uh, where those locations are. So the first thing to do is go up in a DaVinci Resolve uh, thing at the top, go to Preferences, and uh, it will open up a box, Media Storage, and then this is where you add the location for where your clips are. And for me, uh, it's right on my desktop. I only have one folder on the desktop, sample footage, and so I select that, uh, select Desktop. Uh, that adds my desktop to the locations for media. You save that, and uh, and there it appears in the in the box on the left. You click on that, open up the folder for sample footage, and there's my video. Uh, but it's not automatically populated. Uh, and before I actually populate it in, uh, I want to set my preferences for the for the timeline. This tells DaVinci Resolve what I want my my video to uh, the, the preferences for the video, the settings. So I go down to project settings under the file tab. Under master settings at the top is a timeline resolution. So I'm going to select 1920 by 1080 standard high definition. Um, and I try to make it all standard. So I, the video monitoring 1080, uh, 1080p basically 29.97 or, or 30 frames per second. Timeline frame rate, same thing. Keep it all consistent for my for my timelines. Save and then it populates into your uh, or it sets the preferences on there. Now you grab the video clip at the, uh, from the pool and you just drop it down into the uh, to the main pool at the bottom. Now it's it's part of your collection. So you shift back to the timeline on the navigation bar, and there's your your clip. You grab your clip and just drag it down into the timeline and it will pop in there for you. Uh, if it doesn't get it right the first time, try it again. Um, but it's, it's pretty straightforward, just drag and drop. And so there you go. Because this was a DJI clip, there's no audio with it, uh, but we'll work on some audio later. Uh, and at the top here in the, in the timeline is the little slider. It's a cursor for where it, it, you set it for where in the video you want to take an action. So f to start with, I'm going to trim out the beginning. I want to start my clip right where I'm, where the drone was taking off. Uh, it's a good start point. So I move my cursor to that location where I want it to start. And then I go up to the bar above it. And there's a little razor blade there. Select the razor blade and that will cut your clip to where you want it. Go back and select the arrow so that you're back in the arrow, uh, the pointing mode. And you click on that clip that you just cut, and then there's two ways to get rid of it. You cut or ripple cut. Cut will, will 
remove it and then leave a blank in that space. Ripple cut will cut it and then move everything to the left so that your your timeline stays together. And so we've cut it here and, and now it begins right at the lift off point. So we want to edit out some other areas of the, of the video. Again, get the razor blade, make a cut, get the pointer. Now this time we're going to use the uh, put the pointer right over the, the break and you try to get it to where there's this little bracket, uh, a half bracket, and you can just use that and slide it back and it will peel back the video to get rid of what you don't want. Now if you center the cursor directly over the splice, you'll get a double bracket and that's for adjusting both sides of the, of, uh, the, the cut. Uh, but just be aware it will actually affect both both clips uh, on either side of the cut. And once you got uh, got the cut to where you want it, uh, now we want to look at where to exit the end of the video. Uh, so we grab the, the slider, we move it around to the point where we want it, and here I want it to end right where the, where the drone lands again. I grab the razor blade and make a cut on the clip right there where I want it to end, select the, the pointer, and then I, I highlight the last segment of the clip and then and then cut it. So now we've got the clip starting at the beginning where the drone is taken off and then also where it's ending. Now the, the neat feature of DaVinci Resolve is this little slider that's right in the very corner of, of all these clips. It's for fading in and fading out. You just grab that little button and as you see here, you really get a nice smooth transition to black. Move the slider in and, and however far you want to start, wherever you want to start that fade is, is where you move that button. So we can do it at the beginning as well. We move over there, we grab that little button and we slide it in. And that gives us a smooth transition from black into the video. So as we see here, uh, we start out and it's black. And it just gently comes into you know full, full opacity for the for the video, and uh, that's the uh, uh, a real nice feature of of DaVinci uh, Resolve. And if I don't like uh, where I want it, I can adjust it, move move the button around to where I want it, a uh, longer fade in, fade out, uh, whatever, and so we achieve a nice smooth. Uh, fade in to the video. Now to make it uh, professional, uh, as you see here on the cuts, the cuts will, will jump immediately to the next video. It's a very abrupt transition and to smooth it out a bit uh, we can use transition features um, and to do that we go over to our toolbox and we click on the video transitions and uh, we select the fade that we want uh, and then we just grab it, we drag it over, and we place it right over the, the, the splice where, where the video is cut. And as you see, it gently fades from one video to the other, making a very nice smooth transition, giving it a, a professional appearance. All right, now that we've got a smooth transition, uh, let's look at uh, adding a, a title so that we, we got a good professional look to it as well. Uh, we come down, we select, for me, I, I, I tend to like text. Uh, there's a few options. We come here, just drag it right into the box, click on the, the clip itself, and it opens up the inspection window, and that's where we have the controls. So the first thing I do, I want to come up, I highlight the, the title, so I can change the title, add in my own. And here, we're going to call this one Pacific Island. And then I want to change the color of the text. I come down and uh, for me, yellow, I like the, the look of yellow. It's good, uh, it, good contrast. Now to change the size, you just hover over the little box with a number in it. Click on left click and then slide your, your mouse left and right. It will change the size. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, position, go down to the position, the X, you, same thing, you left click and then you move your, your mouse left and right and it will actually move the text where you want it. Uh, that's the X and then you come over to the Y and uh, you adjust uh, where it is in the, in the Y axis. We'll leave it up here towards the top. Um, 
scrolling down, looking at some other things. I like to, for, for good impact, I like to use drop shadow. And the same thing, just a X, Y axis, left click on the mouse and adjust just so it's a little bit off from the normal characters in both the X and Y axis. And it looks like a shadow. So uh, it adds contrast. Uh, but also to for contrast, I like to add a little bit of stroke. And stroke is just an outline around the, the letters so that it gives good contrast against the background. No matter what the color is, you'll be able to see it. There's some other features here for uh, adjusting the, the quality of the, of the text. And again, you come up and grab that little button in the upper corner to get your fade in and fade out. Uh, so that's kind of a standard feature both for audio and for, for visual. Grab that, that uh, clip, slide it to where you want it, and... Uh, uh, position it for for entrance and and exit and here it is coming up and so you see the the title fading in and then again it it gently fades out at the end a very professional look to it So for the sake of brevity, uh, since this is just a tutorial, I'm going to cut this, this clip down a bit. Um, I'm just going to take a big chunk out of the middle here to cut down the time. Select a razor blade. Uh, I make cut at the beginning, and then where I just want to cut the section out, I, I make another, another cut. And uh, now my options here, I can use ripple cut or I can use regular cut. Um, the regular cut will leave a big gap, a ripple cut will move all the clips over. I decide to use just a plain old cut just to show you what that is. And here now I've got a big gap in this section. To move over the rest of it, I can just highlight, use my mouse, and I just highlight the entire section uh, to the right and just slide it over to bring it in line with, with the beginning part of the clip. And uh, there we go. And then I want to get a a video transition just like before I select cross dissolve which is my favorite that's kind of a standard it looks good uh, it checks for some other options here which you might want to do but cross dissolve is kind of a standard it looks good it looks very professional and it's very smooth so I drop that in there and now we've got a much a much shorter video only 39 seconds um, now we've got a good looking video however we have no audio here. Uh, the DJI doesn't have audio with it, and if it did, all we'd hear is the, the noise coming from the drone. So we want to add some music. I go up to my, uh, I go back to the media uh, tab. I go back to my desktop where I have my uh, sample footage, and I select an audio track, which is some music. Grab it, I drop it down into the, the media pool, and then I switch back over to, on the bottom, I switch back to the timeline, and there it is. It's in the, the, the pool for, uh, for the timeline. Again, I just grab it, drag it down, drop it into the, the audio track, which is below it, in this case, audio one. But the music's a lot longer than the video. So I just select the video clip, I grab the razor again, and cut that to the to the length that I want uh, select the the portion that I want to delete and then right click move up and cut now again like I said those little uh, the fade in fade out buttons are there for the audio as well so I I select a good fade out point and I come to the beginning and I have a little bit of fade in in the beginning as well <laughs> So now we have the video that we want. It's looking smooth, looking good. Uh, everything that we want. We've done our edits. Now we're it ready to produce. We come down to the navigation bar again. We see the little rocket there. That's that's the tab for producing the video. Click on the rocket. It opens up the actual uh, the rendering uh, section. Come up to the browse button. That tells you where you want to send your video after it's rendered. In my case, I'm sending it back to the sample footage uh, folder. Click OK. Open up the file button, and this is where you enter the name for your file, custom name. 
Uh, in this case, um, again, Pacific Island render. Move over to the video section. This is where you tell it the size of the video that you want to produce. In this case, I'm going to make an MP4, uh, MPEG-4, H.264, and it is in high definition, uh, 1920 by 1080p, 30 frames per second. Everything looks good. Then you click on the Add to Render queue. That sends it over to the Render queue, and when it's over there, click on Start Render, and the thing will will render. Um, depending on your machine, it's it's almost real time, close to it, so it, it's not a, a real lengthy process. But uh, uh, I've sped it up here for uh, the for the, uh, the tutorial here. Um, as it's going through the rendering, you can actually see the effects in, in the video as as you've you've built it. The video finishes rendering and you're ready to go. Uh, if you look up in the upper corner, it shows completed and now you uh, can watch your video. It downloads it to the location that you've designated. Uh, we want to save the project and close out DaVinci Resolve. And here's our video. Thank you.